Gregorio, who's the Park Supervisor, uh, Patricia Ferguson, uh, APRM, um, and Peter Jones, our Deputy Chief of uh, Recreation. Oh, Council Member Torres' office is here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Hi, how are you there? Um, so, uh, without further ado, what I'd like to do is, what we try to do is to bring uh, before you some of the scoping meetings. And we're one of the very few agencies who actually solicit uh, community participation, community involvement, community comments. Uh, I don't know of any other agency that actually comes and wants to hear from you in terms of what your interest is and being able to see it. Um, so, without further ado, what I'd like to do is to be able to introduce um, Renata Sokolowski, who is the Director of Design for the Borough of the Bronx. Yay! Yes. Thank you very much. Um, we're very excited to, we are very excited to have you here at today and uh, the goal of this meeting here is to actually hear um, you know your opinion you know, about this project so we're very thankful to um, the council member office to uh, fund this in the amount of $200,000 and uh, as a uh, part of the broader initiative citywide uh, Parks is really promoting the fitness among uh, different ages. Um, so from uh, you know, smaller kids, you know, with the play equipment, you know, teenagers, you know, with the sport courts and the adults and then, you know, seniors to actually uh, use uh, fitness machines, you know, that are available outside of the paid and uh, maybe sport clubs, you know, and you can enjoy the really outdoor while you are exercising. And the Brooks Park is really a wonderful facility uh, where you can actually, you know, work throughout and then you can stop, you know, and do things, you know, as you enjoy, um, you know, your uh, route. Uh, we have just recently completed another fitness station uh, just, um, you know, north of the Uganaqua office, uh, parks department, and there are now four basketball courts, and we turned on the remaining a tennis court into a basketball and there are nine stations just nearby. So this project uh, will introduce a similar equipment and uh, I'm going to introduce, just uh, get you through sort of our capital process, how do we do projects in parks and what is actually required. Um, it's a, a little lengthy. Um, it's a little bit lengthy a process, but it's necessary in order to obtain all the necessary approvals. Um, so, first of course, so welcome everybody, and we're going to show you the presentation, and uh, after the presentation we will take any questions uh, you know, from you. Um, so, uh, parks, you know, we treat as our community assets. We really are having a big heart, you know, for any a facility that we are improving for the use of, you know, the community members. And they range from, you know, a different places. It could be a playground, could be a sitting area, a fitness area, a larger park. You know, we have a lot going on in the Bronx. Um, so, the capital process. So, um, we have to... You know, while we are designing and we have to get you know, certain approvals, this unfortunately takes some time. Uh, with this project, because it's a new use in an existing <coughs> park, we will have to go to Public Design <coughs> Commission and they will have to give us a final approval to go ahead and they make sure that citywide all the projects are fitting within you know, the year uh, settings, their neighborhoods, you know, landscape, you know, and nothing really terrible is happening in the, in, in the city. Um, so uh, initially, um, the, the, the initiation of the project takes about you know, one to two months, and the project starts basically today. So uh, we received the funding this fiscal year, meaning in July of 2016, uh, but we were able to you know, get this scope meeting you know, and uh, everything else ready for today. So today officially is the beginning of the project. So since this project is a little bit of a smaller scale than to, you know, maybe some of the other projects, we hope uh, that the timeline for this will be a little bit uh, you know, faster or shorter. Uh, but uh, this is really for an average project you know, that we uh, deal with at parks. Uh, so then the design process after we uh, do the survey, after we uh, learn you know, what's in the vicinity, you know, we go into the design process and we have a first meeting inside 
uh, the Capro Project uh, division to make sure that everybody is informed. Uh, then, you know, the, uh, <coughs> you know, when the design is actually uh, done, we present it to, to our Deputy Commissioner for Capro uh, uh, Project. And then we show it to our Borough Commissioner and uh, um, our uh, in-house staff and then we go to the Parks Commission <coughs> and after that we come back to you and present it to the community board and uh, that will be the uh, schematic design or the preliminary design. And at that point, you still can comment, you know, on any issues of the actual design. Today, we're just going to talk about what we intend to do. Mm. But when we come back with a couple months, this is what we have designed, and you will have a chance to let us know whether you agree with this design or not. And after that, we go straight to our uh, computers, uh, not drafting tables, we don't have those anymore. And mm -hmm. uh, we develop the actual uh, contract uh, documents which consists of specifications and uh, the contract the drawings. And once those are complete, we submit again to a public design commission to make sure uh, that what was presented at the preliminary, preliminary design state, stage um, also is reflected in the final document the drawings. Um, after that, uh, we actually transmitting what we call transmitting the project, which means that okay, the design now is complete. We prepare the whole package for the contractor, uh, you know, to build this. And now this will have to go through a process in procurement. So that's the third bubble. And uh, that process is really complicated. But within two to three months, we are able to advertise the project to the construction uh, community. The contractors and then, you know, put their bids after 21 days and uh, we open the bids and see who is the lowest bidder and so on and so on. And uh, depending on how many bidders actually are uh, bidding on the project, we then, uh, you know, analyze from the lowest bidder up to, you know, the one that we find that it's uh, what we call responsive and responsible, meaning they have all the ducks in a row and we feel comfortable, you know, with them to actually build the job. Um, after then, the uh, money is registered with the controller's office, and we are ready to initiate the uh, order to work date, which is the start of construction. And on that day, we have a kickoff meeting at the site, and the contractor is ready to go with the contract. And the construction typically takes about 12 months. Again, um, you know, based on the other project that we uh, just finished, it took actually only, I think, five and a half or six months. You know, it's a little bit of a smaller scale, so hopefully, you know, that also uh, will be reflected in this uh, process. And uh, so, you know, the location, and I'll yep. give you uh, now um, the stage to Samir, who is the project manager. <coughs> Good evening, my name is Samir Roy. I'm a designer with a Capital uh, project. And as Vinada has explained, the, the grooming process of bringing a project from drawing Capital to the construction is more or less three years process. But it takes, it needs a lot of your feedback and our feedback in order to make it happen. So now I'm going to go through uh, uh, what I mean, where the site is located and why we choose that location and any feedback is welcome once the uh, presentation is done. This project is basically located on uh, Bronx Park East. As you see, uh, this, is, uh, this, is, this is the location of the Bronx Borough and that's where the Bronx Park is. Bronx Park is about, you know, um, 1,800 acres, so it's a big, uh, big land. And this, this particular chunk of this land is located in the uh, northern area of the Bronx Park. And this gives a better picture. Um, like this, this is Bronx River Expressway, and this is the Bronx River passing through this. And from accessibility point of view, we find uh, this is a better location compared to other um, facilities we have. 
and as you can see, uh, type of other facilities we have in this uh, in this particular uh, part. It has a uh, uh, baseball court, softball, soccer field, uh, playground, skate park. Skate park is very uh, close to it, and also a uh, synthetic soccer field. You know, I'm going to come to those areas in details. Uh, that's how. Uh, Looks like, as I said, you know, this is the Bronx River uh, Parkway, and this is no, Bronx Park space. East Boulevard, and the entire street is having you know parallel parking on one side, and in this side is all surrounded by multi-family housing. Mm -hmm. So, considering the number of people living there and the density-wise, this is one of the best location from accessibility point of view. There are two streets, one is Arnold Avenue, another one is uh, uh, Britain, Britain is uh, somewhere right Yeah, we know. Okay, this is a little clearer picture. Um, we have a skate park in one side, and this is all the land in the other side. And this area is kind of very tight. We were initially thinking to have it, but it's very tight, so we found uh, don't forget, this entire side is, uh, you know, having a lot of mature trees, you know. So we can't really do one because we need to remove trees and typically we are not allowed to remove trees mm -hmm. because it's an expensive area and we don't want to. Okay. And, uh, mm -hmm. That's the picture showing um, the other side. Mm -hmm. synthetic uh, uh, sort of field that I've been talking about. And this is basically the south end of the lawn, this is the north end of the lawn. There is a little uh, depression out here that kind of works positively for us in order to take up the drainage because once you put a synthetic turf or any kind of you know, impervious surface, it's going to generate you know, drainage issues. So this area is considered to be a good location to accumulate all the water and take it care naturally. And this is approximate location we're talking about. It's not like uh, we have a um, sort of field out here, and this is going to be somewhere somewhere in, in that area. And with this picture, sorry, uh, this picture is basically taken from that end. So it's having good access from you know all directions. And also is surrounded by a, uh, another asphalt walkway, so it's considered, you know, it's having easy access. It's another picture. <laughs> this one is basically showing there's some down. mature trees, which is uh, fairly it's big. Trees is kind of having a root, so we can't go too close to the root. This is the tree we're talking about. It's going to be very small. Yeah, it's tiny. These are the type of picture we tend to install. Um, this picture basically shows uh, like in a different type of uh, fitness stations available in the market. And one of the requirements is like at least 70, 60 to 70 percent of the uh, metal fitness station must have accessible to like the EA means, you know. People who are, you know, physically challenged, they need to have the ability to use them. So, the first thing we have to choose, you know, certain, like for example, parallel bar, and also other fixture, whatever we have, so that you know, uh, people from you know all age groups, especially the adults, they can use it. This is uh, some of the more picture. And they are pretty, uh, like, you know, how they look like, you know, once in a uh, format, which is kind of shown for the designer. And if you have any other idea, you can always feel free to share with us. Thank you. Can you go back one slide?
The basketball courts near the wearing so we're out. We're going to start taking questions? Yes. She's okay, so I'll let her the question. So raise your hand if you'd like to ask a question. So, okay, obviously, yeah, this, pro this project, this, this project, this project, this project. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, See, six. See, but she was okay. first. No, I already um, started. Marcy already started. Soapbox. Go ahead, Marcy. The basketball courts in the wearing, by the Waring Avenue playground had adult fitness equipment that was four by fours and cement, and it lasted for about 10 years, which this, I mean, I, I like the idea. I think it's a great idea. But I can envision this being destroyed within a week, especially where it is. Mm -hmm. It's a much more vandalized section of the park. One of the things that I've noted is that we've gotten much better at the type of place, uh, the type of fitness equipment that we utilize in our parks, and we have fitness equipment in areas of the South Bronx, and things that they have sustained. Uh, uh, Soundview Park, for example, uh, beautiful uh, fitness equipment. Uh, any any number of places throughout the borough that you would ordinarily think of would be vandalized and would be, and because of the type of equipment that it is and things like that, it's it's held up beautifully. And I have to, I was surprised, and to be honest with you, very surprised, pleasantly surprised. So I don't see that. Uh, we have actually Wait, worked with these uh, manufacturers. We have two that we prepare for the durability of their products, uh, and they have actually changed, you know, some of the uh, connectors and uh, you know the, the moving parts, especially that usually you know give up sort of you know sooner. Uh, we also give them our feedback, uh, you know, on some units that, you know, maybe don't do exactly what we're supposed to do with it. Um, and, uh, you know, if people get hurt, you know, or something, so we give them, you know, that feedback right away. And they actually are constantly, you know, up improving, you know, these. So we have recently improved also, I mean, they installed this type of equipment in the Bronx Park, um, just the south of this location. And uh, recently in Cedar Park, uh, just the, by the basketball courts, uh, just Radio. the north of the, the police station. Radio. 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 Okay. So that's a great view. You can actually park. go and see what it looks like. Yeah, I, I, I will. It seems, it seems to be great. Um, Donald and Arlene? Yes. Uh, have you spoken to anyone in the London, England Parks Department? Uh -huh. They have no. extensive, oh, heavy, heavy, heavy duty exercise equipment out in the open air, <laughs> which has survived for at least, I think, five or six years. Mm -hmm. Is that in the private courtyard or this no, is no, the park? No, no, it's in, in the parks in London, England. You know, where Across the pond. Yeah, no, okay, so I'm looking at it myself. What? I don't <laughs> need it. I'll go with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, there are lots of Londons, but they have had this kind of program in their parts uh, for quite a few years. And they, a, a friend of mine who described this to me said they're built like industrial uh, things. Heavy, heavy, indestructible. Well, so I know I that these two companies you, also install their products you know, outside of the United no, States, some in Germany. Well, who knows? But, but if you know. look, you might find something, right? Mm -hmm. And if you don't find anything, nothing's lost. Okay. Arlene, and then... What's that? Michael, Grace, and Annie. On the slide that you had next to the soccer field, I live in that area where the sure. site is supposed to Now, with that soccer field, do you have any plans to enclose one side of it? Because it's used mm -hmm. practically almost every day. You can't enclose. And I don't see, no, it's not. Only on one side. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, Just so in what way it's too close? Another fence. Another fence. So there's a chain fence too. So that they're going to be the ball the ball the ball 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 very close to the people that are exercising. Are exercising it's open right. on one side. Mm -hmm. Because the people are exercising, they will be able to put the side of the wall. Right, so... Right, so actually that, yeah, that location is kind of general, uh, but you know, we will look into, you know, how the bolts are actually being straight, and uh, you know, the units, you know, could be spread over. Uh, but we probably don't look more than maybe four to five units. 
to be installed. The circle does look kind of close. I think it's a waste of time and money. More, right? like, more likely, um, <laughs> the design, I mean, this. Uh, More likely, you know, uh, these equipment are going to be in this area because of the tree. We can't really come that close, so they are likely to be in this area. And we plan to put some benches in this side of the street, so they are kind of uh, you benches. Know, yes. huh? Real benches. Real benches. Yeah. 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 Not the metal ones, the wooden ones, right? No, they can't. Yeah. So you know that is that is going to you know, help people who sit there and watch soccer as well as you know take rest you know, while doing exercises. You know what this is okay. a good um, idea. What's your name? Michael. Michael. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Michael Taylor. I'm the one who actually proposed the idea for the no fitness equipment. Um, in terms of the proximity for the area that you're designating, is it going to be quite a uh, real cluster in that area? in terms of the workstations, because when I proposed the idea, I kind of had um, envisioned the space where you proposed that you would uh, put benches off to the side. This way it would be uh, sporadic workstations through the area. This way it's not um, the people, it's not clustered to where you're on top of the soccer players and the skateboard players. So the, some of the elderly people would not feel intimidated just having to force to go to this one area to make use of the area. Okay. Uh, we definitely will look, you know, into different options uh, and see what is most feasible. Uh, from experience, we know that if we produce, I mean, we install just individual stations, you know, you know, one at a time, you know, so you have a time to go from one section to the other. Uh -huh. And that's a uh, very well known, you know, and then may, may, maybe more natural, you know, parts where you have, you know, sort of informal path and, yeah. um, and you know, the stations. However, by uh, the national standards, uh, we have to provide a hard pavement and the safety surface, which is that rubber cushion that you see in, in the playgrounds under the day equipment. Um, so we have to actually install that. Uh, if we sort of make it continuous, it could be uh, that it's maybe in the linear fashion, maybe not in a straight line or so, so we will look into that. Um, but you know, if we do it in continuous, then that's most feasible for the funding that we have. Uh, one last thing, even in terms of the accessibility for the uh, handicap accessibility right. to it, along the path, you could still put the, the cushioned uh, work areas this way, they're able to go along and continue the path Definitely, and yes. stop along Correct. the way versus yes, we will, know, we'll make because sure that along that route yes. is also the bikes and rollerbladers in that path. That's right. Uh -huh. so on, uh, the walkway, how people would be able to access that area. We will make sure that, you know, anybody on the wheelchair or, you know, with any impairment would be able to get off the path and safely exercise. Sure. Um, um, I forgot what the heck I was going to ask. Um, with that, uh, in that area, are you going to add, is there any way to add a bathroom, extra lighting, uh, because it's... <laughs> It's a, the, it's a, it's because a the bathroom is all the way on the other side. Uh, understand that that bathrooms are even now, a porta potty. They're over three million dollars to to do, and we don't do porta potties on a permanent basis. We don't do porta potties. They have them at Reese at Reese. Uh, That's by Helen Parkway Little League. Right, but they do a, like a little league or something mm -hmm. like that, and that's uh, they rent them. They rent them themselves, um, and but we don't have any permanent porta potties in in, in the park. We do, and, and the comfort stations are over three million dollars for a new comfort mm -hmm. station itself to do that. So, so how do we get? How can we get porta potties? Porta potties. We have to go to Richie. And playgrounds. No, no. <laughs> they tell us that we can. Talk. <laughs> so while we're on the subject, um, I was going to ask a question. How about water fountains? Because yeah, I was going to say water fountain. The only water fountain between Palm Parkway North and Burke Avenue is on Waste Place. Mm. Trickles and Waring Avenue in the playground. But we would have to look at where the water lines are because depending on the distance as well, because that, that's the issue that we had when we were trying to do the dog run on one of the locations. So we would have to see because you would have to dig out the trench and connect it, and that's a, you know that's an expense. I can't tell you how much that expense might be, 
Um, is, that but, some, is that something you could look into? We can all ask Tanuli. We will definitely be able to try to look into it. No, no, I, I, I don't disagree. Yeah, it would, it would take about half of the budget to, to do it on for this particular project. Eighty to ninety thousand dollars to install, you know, the new water connection. Well, you know, we just say no, or put it on the account. But it's not only that. So we have to connect to a nearby, you know, water main in the street. We have to open the street. Uh, we have to make the connection. Then we have to uh, install a structure where we install, you know, the special valves and uh, water meter. What's the minimum cost of that? It's about eight to ninety thousand dollars. And because the structure is a concrete structure, it's uh, five feet deep and it's four by seven, um, and it has a water meter because the that water has to be metered, you know, from the city. And then we have to run the pipe, you know, and the drinking fountain alone is about fifteen thousand dollars. Now these are just you know numbers of the drinking fountain alone. However, we have to also take under consideration other costs like the excavation, showing if the water has to be deep because the main is deep. You know, sometimes we have in the uh, in the city, you know, water mains that are you know 10, 15 feet deep under the street bed. And that's, you know, additional cost. So we really not sure what's happening here. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's possible, but I think that uh, the councilman, you know, has really uh, given this uh, funding, you know, for the fitness equipment. So I think this would have to go first. And maybe in the future, if we have any other capital projects, improvements, or the... Um, I'll look at what the cost would be. After the time, I'm getting on it. Yeah. Uh, really, I'm really happy with what I'm seeing. Really hard, and I love this, this what's going on. Um, I want to know um, would there be any provisions for senior friendly, disability mm -hmm. friendly equipment? I don't know if that's been explored, yeah, that's not, but I know that we have a lot of seniors in the area, and maybe you know, one or two pieces that be accommodated to someone that uses a wheelchair. Or someone that's yes, like some have said that you know at least uh, you know fifty percent of the units will have to have our uh, senior friendly and just uh, um, ADA you know friendly equipment. Uh, some of them are actually integrated. So on one side of the hall you have someone who can actually sit on the little seat. On the other side you can actually pull out the wheelchair and exercise exactly the same way. Oh, wonderful! Yes. Thank you so much. Um, before we get to Mark, I want the service brought up. A it's couple of years ago, I think I mean, that a big issue um, for people to utilize the park in Arno is the lack of a water fountain. And that was one of the like, and first requests that was, was brought to our meeting um, when park manager, when another park manager was at, was at our meeting. So I, you said the minimum cost is eighty to 90000 And what is the minimum cost of the equipment and the equipment aspect? The two hundred thousand dollars that we have allocated for this probably will take us, you know, up to five units. That's all. That's all. Me five units. We have all the safety surface, which is pretty expensive: pavements, excavations, construction fence, sign, you know, any safety provisions, uh, protection of the trees. How much do you want to that one actually was also 200. There were more units, however, there is no safety surface. The, 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 the standards changed. The, 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 the standards changed that we had to put safety surfacing underneath where the, the first ones that we put in did not require. One meeting, please, everybody. Okay, uh, next. Wait, yeah, I just want to add on to something. Maybe that we can. Um, as the councilman for next year's participatory budgeting, that you know, that, that and, you know, we need to send lo love up to you know Parkside area, and you know, uh, we can. You know that PP is all on you guys. If you guys put the project <laughs> on the ballot. <laughs> So, I mean, just, uh, just you know, for next year, I think that would be a good idea. So, can I, can I get a Penny. consensus? Hold on, guys. Can I get consensus? So, the overall design and outreach phase, how long will that take? Like, um, you reaching out to the community, you designing the plans, you coming back, getting community board approval. So, uh, right now, we will go back, you know, to our office and discuss the schedule and uh, as maybe some of you know or don't know, um, all projects that are active in design uh, will be posted on our website on the tracker, what we call the tracker, 
And once we establish the schedule, you will be able to see what is the estimated completion date. Um, so like we said, you know, normally we take about 12 months. Hopefully this will take less. You know, Samir will do everything he can, you know, to speed things out. Um, but, uh, you know, I would say minimum six months. So six months. If, if Diana regularly attends the PB, Grace does, I do as well. If we can get something on the participatory budgeting ballot, let's say for a hundred thousand, for particularly for water fountains right. near the exercise okay. equipment, is that something that could be? Important? If we if we receive the money in July, once the budget July is done, we can add it to this project okay. because we probably will be still in design phase, and we can add the water collection. Yes. Raphael, it has to be for next year's participation. Yes, right. We already it's have, not right. we already have the, but that would be but she's going to be the two eighteen. Yeah, I know. We already have the ballot, and we're going to be voting. I didn't say now. for this July. I said for next July. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're still we're, we're still meeting with council members. I just want you to know we're still meeting with council members, mm -hmm. and we give them suggestions as well. In terms of the things that, that we feel as park professionals, um, projects that they consider funding, um, so it doesn't hurt for us to, to indicate that this is what we heard in the community, and it, because the project may still be in the design phase, so if, if there's money that is appropriated from the city much faster than a state uh, state money, it could possibly uh, be incorporated into the project. Um, I'll get the question. Arlene, what do you think? Because I don't see too many other people here who live between Allerton and AD. Is that it, a concern that you hear about the lack of water fountain? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So if they put in exercise equipment without a water fountain, oh, good. you might have well, a lot of people pissed off and happy. Because it's an issue that's been... No, wait a minute. Well, okay, go ahead. Yes. The item on the participatory budget ballot was for the exercise equipment. It wasn't for exercise equipment plus the water station. The soccer players, the skateboarders have existed for years without a water fountain. But they've also so I do not think that it's right to suggest that we chip away at the budget for the fitness that's equipment not what he's saying. to this add in this a water chipping. fountain. This isn't chipping away. This is no. what I'm suggesting is putting something on the ballot next year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Saying right. water, Annie. um, water fountain for okay. I'm Arnold, no. Arnold. But I don't think I that we should modify this. Well, we, well, we can't chip away because there's not enough money for water fountain. Right, and besides, people voted for the fitness station. Well, I, would, I was not suggesting chipping away. I don't think we can amend the This is from actually, right, I'll, I'll drop my, um, to be half what it was, and then water fountain. Mark, then Marcy, then Donald. Mark. Um, I was, I'm a little confused. First of all, this is the planning stage, apparently. So it's a preliminary stage. But who has final say on whether this happens and if it goes over budget or if it goes past the deadline, then what happens? Our, our role is to make sure that it's not over budget and it's done within the time. That's our commitment. I understand, excuse me, but with all due respect, your professionalisms uh, on your jobs, if somebody decides that this project is not satisfying them, or if the planning board for some reason says no to the project after it's presented, what happens? Does it fall apart? I, I will say this, okay? We have Arlene, you know, represents the Parks Committee of Community Board 11. Arlene Drayton? And then, oh, then yeah. Oh. Okay, so okay. And, and what, what happens is, is that the community boards can and should weigh in on it. That's what originally we always used to go first, we only used to go to the community boards. Under this administration, we have taken it upon ourselves as a city agency to go to the community, to go directly to the community that is being serviced, okay, okay, that, that the project is coming. And the community board, as we have here in the presence of Arlene Drayton, comes, they come to these scoping meetings so they can see what the community is saying, okay, okay. first and foremost, okay? Yeah, okay and so I have, to, I have to say that, because I, 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 and then when we go to the community board, Arlene and us in the Parks Department, we convey what your message is and do that. They may make suggestions and tweak it and things like that, but again, nine times out of ten, I would say that usually the community board will be in compliance and they will support the community desires. Okay, as a follow-up to that question, um, I'm a little confused. 
because it's preceptory budgeting, I don't go to the meeting. Maybe right. I should. But um, does that raise our taxes or no? No, no, no. 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 Okay. Thank you. Grace, go ahead. Uh, Whoever. Grace. All right, let me just just quickly about when you when you be 